I wish to speak to Mahatma Gandhi. Why? Because everyone is quoting him about be the change you wish to see in the world. Nice quote. Didn't he know that change is hard for humans? People are complex. Their lack of understanding and empathy breeds fear, anger, and violence. I don't even want to be a part of the human race anymore. We know that Martin Luther King was inspired by Gandhi, and he said, Nothing in all the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. And the Dalai Lama, also inspired by Gandhi, says, World peace must be developed from inner peace. So where is the seed of nonviolence? Where is the seed of nonviolence? Where is the seed of nonviolence? It must be an inside job. Many have been robbed of peace within. Just breathe, they say. Oh, that's the way? What if your lungs are blocked with grief? When you speak, you choke and can't get woke. Where is the seed of nonviolence? Where is the seed of nonviolence? Look at the heart. It's wicked smart. There are caverns deep that make you safe from shore and caves of darkness to bring out your brave. From the bottom of your heart, that's a start. From the bottom of your heart, that's a start. Silence is the answer. Words are not enough. Move, break the cycle, touch the eternal. Light peeks through, a kernel of love's vibrations ring true. When your mind is relaxed, true love grows. Kindness and wisdom shows. Most important, keep your light. Keep your light, keep your light, keep your light. Nonviolence is in the bottom of our hearts. Our yearning, our learning, our triggers, our shadows. You get to choose. There is nothing to lose. When you train, your brain can refrain from violence. And when it doesn't rhyme, we don't shine. Only my, me, and mine. Maybe it's time to shine from the bottom of our hearts. From the bottom of our hearts. That's the art. Hello, I'm Leilani Henry. Thank you for inviting me to A Day Without Hate. When I think about A Day Without Hate, I think about a day with nonviolence. And I was already thinking about nonviolence when you invited me. Where, what happened to nonviolence? Why doesn't it show up more? Why don't we talk about it more? And that led me to Gandhi, which led me to think about Martin Luther King and the Dalai Lama. And then I wrote the poem, Where's the Seed to Nonviolence? So today I want to talk about the connection between nonviolence internally as well as externally. It starts with us and then it moves outward like ripples in a pond. So just to show you, remind you about that. So that's you in the center reaching out. When I think about hate, it starts from fear and anger, depression and anxiety. Those are the seeds of hate. And the seeds of nonviolence, understanding, appreciation, self-love, forgiveness, love for others. So let's look at uh, a few words that I put together and see which ones jump out at you. What are you attracted to? Heart, there's dream up here, bravery. Just think about which ones for you are important. So look at the heart, it's wicked smart. We all have a heart. Some years ago, I met Dr. Joseph Chilton Pierce, who wrote the book, A Magical Child. And he talked about African children who had not lost their powers of clairvoyance, clairaudience, telekinesis. They could move objects with their minds. 
they grow up in a culture that this is acceptable. He talks about how we can all do this, but it has to be nurtured. So I'm sitting there in the audience and he's talking about these things about the heart. And all of a sudden I start crying and my eyes are watering and, and my nose is running and I'm trying to hide in my hoodie, trying to be discreet. And I have a full blown cold. Nine don't know where it came from. I'm at a kinesiology conference. So there are people around me who do know because your muscles are biofeedback for what's going on in your unconscious. So they kind of wait until the lecture is over. But in the lecture, Dr. Pierce talks about the heartbeat and how the heartbeat forms first, then the cells of the heart form first and they travel up to the brain. So the heart has intelligence. It's 10 times the power of the brain. And it takes instructions from the brain. So the brain, it influences attention, it influences perception and memory and problem solving. And we underestimate the heart. And I was underestimating my heart. I'm working at Martin, Lockheed Martin, and it's rocket science, like you know, and everybody is smart. And I wanna be valued for my brain also. So to have someone tell me that the brain is maybe not less, but we'll just say the heart is at least as important or more important than the brain threw me off. So after the lecture, my friends took me to another room and started looking and helped me understand that I had a trigger about being smart and was scared of working from my heart. So we worked on that about an hour later, went back to the conference, I felt great. My cold symptoms went away immediately. They went away immediately. So there is this amazing connection between heart and brain that we don't often talk about. A few years later, emotional intelligence has become a thing, right? Daniel Goldman wrote a book on emotional intelligence, and now we know that EQ gives as much information about your success as IQ. And in some cases, EQ will make all the difference. We need to have a compassionate mind and an intelligent heart to be successful. And what else is in the heart? You're longing for nonviolence, you're longing for peace, energy, compassion, even that small voice that you have that sometimes you ignore, that small voice is your intuition, pay attention to it. And your destiny is also in your heart. So it's very important to remember your heart is wicked smart. When your mind grows, excuse me, when, when your mind is relaxed, true love grows, kindness and wisdom shows. Let me just go quickly to here and think about the heart and think about coherence. I'm studying with the HeartMath organization. They've been around for about 25 years and they have amazing information scientific information about the heart. So a lot of what I shared and what much more is there. And they are researching global coherence and understanding that each of us, that ripple effect, each of us ultimately affects what's happening in the world. So not only in your family, your school community, our nation, the world, it's all, we're all connected. And positive emotions make a difference in your health and your well being. So, things like self validation, appreciation, compassion for self, self love, love for others, those are all emotions that affect our well being. And in fact, when you have emotions that have to do with hate and anger and fear, they can measure the, the connection between your brain and your heart when you, you have a jagged, the picture of your heart when it's not in coherence is jagged. 
you can almost see the hate. You can almost see the fear in the graph. And when you change to positive emotions and your heart and your brain are in coherence, they're wavy, beautiful uh, symbol of what's happening in the coherence in your heart. Well, how do you know when your heart and your mind are at odds? What do you do? Take a breath, take a deep breath, put your hands on your belly. And when you inhale, allow your belly to push your hands out. And on the exhale, your belly come back, comes back in. Inhale, belly is out. Exhale, belly is in. When you sip through a straw, you'll notice that movement happens naturally. So the goal is to have alignment between heart, body, and mind. And another way to do that is with Brain Gym. So Brain Gym are simple movements to help you connect. And it starts with water. So if you're water available, if you have water available, take a sip. And water is for energy. Water is brain food. So when you're stuck, grab water, and that will help you gain the energy and the focus that you need. And then brain buttons. Put your hand on your belly button, and you rub right underneath your collarbone and your first rib. Kind of straddle your sternum. Take a deep breath. And also move your eyes from side to side without moving your head. Be aware of your breathing. You can switch hands. So this is all to help your nervous system calm down, to help you focus, and to give you clarity. The next movement is elbow to knee or hand on knee. And the more slowly that you go, the more of your brain you use. You can also bring your hand from all the way back. This helps your mind, your, 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 excuse me, this helps your left brain and your right brain connect. This helps you with action, helps you move toward your goals. All of these movements help with learning. You can do this before a test. You can do this in a stressful interaction. You can do this to help reduce stress so that you can connect with others. The other thing is to cross your ankles and your wrist in the same direction. So right over right, left over left. Palms meet, fingers lace, fold back up. Tongues on the roof of your mouth on the inhale. Exhale, relax your tongue. Just take a few breaths focusing inward. This is for positive energy and coherence. You can uncross, relax your tongue, put your fingertips together. A couple more breaths, helping you breathe through your diaphragm this time. So again, when you are feeling health, when you're feeling satisfied with yourself, when you are feeling in alignment with your heart and your mind, when you're not feeling stressed, you can reach out to others. And that's, that's the key, right? You have to feel good when you, you can't be empathetic when you're not feeling well. The line from the song, when you train your brain refrains from violence. You can train yourself to do these things. And when you have a lack of self-worth, it's a kind of violence toward yourself. When you hate yourself, it's hard to appreciate others. And when you're stressed, you can't be empathetic, like I mentioned. So it's very important for you to value yourself, find your voice, find ways to connect. So a dream that I had was I was a fly on the wall and I'm watching a group of people who are brainstorming and coming to a decision and my chair is empty. And I'm wondering, I'm listening. I, uh, I wanna make comments. I want to share. 
and my voice is mute and everyone's going around, comes to my chair. I can't say anything. It makes me realize that I do have a voice and, I, and what I have to offer is of a value, a value. And in fact, no one else can say it or do it quite like me. And that's true for everybody. And at that point, I wasn't clear that I had such a value to bring. Not only that, but no two irises are alike. Your fingerprints are completely different. No one has your fingerprints and no one has your voice. So we do make a difference. It's important to know that. Also in the metaphysical world, we come from different planets. Can you imagine every single person on the planet coming from somewhere else? The billions of planets that make up the multiverse. It's another metaphor for remembering that we have something to offer, that we, that we have a voice, and it's important to share that. When I was working at Honeywell, uh, we were working on a diversity, equity, inclusion training, and we have a poster, and it says, you are unique, Y-O-U are unique. And the poster is from the, um, excuse me, uh, the Statue of Liberty, and she has on tennis shoes, red sneakers, and you are unique. So another reminder of that. So another line from the poem is about move, break the cycle and touch the eternal. Light peeks through, a kernel of love's vibrations ring true. Again, it all starts with you and you go from self to community to the world. So I think about these kaleidoscope images. We make kaleidoscopes and think about the kaleidoscope as a metaphor for the, the, a ripple effect again. So the light peeks through and then it reaches outward. And each of those beautiful pieces make a beautiful mandala. And mandala is just purely Sanskrit for circle. We're all connected. So when you're balanced and you're comfortable in your own skin, it's easier to reach out. Look around and pay attention to the patterns in your school community. Where can you make a difference? Where are people feeling marginalized? Where are they on the fringe? What creates the haves and the have nots and the in circle and the out circle? And if you are a loner and you're ostracized or you feel very different and you feel like you're on the outside, when someone reaches out, can you receive that? A lot of times we're so inward, we're so traumatized that even an act of generosity, we can't receive it. We can't receive a compliment. So that's a, a really great sign is to think about receiving compliments as a way to start receiving and using that for self-validation. And if you're in the in-group, how can you give a gift of generosity? How can you see someone? We all want to see and be seen. We all want to be seen. The other thing is be open to conflict because that's where we learn. And I work with corporate people and they all say, well, I'm afraid to speak up. I'm afraid to say anything. I might say the wrong thing. And it's, sometimes it's just better to say something. If there's a microaggression, something that is um, an, an anger towards somebody else or an act of violence in a way towards someone else and we all look away instead of saying something, even if you say, ouch, that at least acknowledges that there's something there that um, did not validate someone. So you get to choose, there is nothing to lose. And then finally, most important, keep your light. You are the generation, you are the seventh generation. Let me just stop the video for a second. So Crazy Horse it was a, an amazing medicine man and a, a revered warrior. And he said in 1870, 
1967, the seventh generation will rise up against hate and come together, humanity together. You're facing a world that your parents and your grandparents are not as equipped. They're not as equipped to handle the world. They're not as equipped as you are. And things get handed down in the generations like hate that no longer serve us. And, you know, we get into these conversations, we get into these um, situations where hate is just accepted. So you can have more days without hate if you keep your light. You can have nonviolence. And in your generation, we're looking to you to make that happen. And how do you do that? How do you keep your light? How do you keep your life? Well, you know, you stop blaming and shaming others. Take responsibility for your own thoughts and feelings. Appreciate beauty wherever you can find it. Be curious and interested in others. Ask questions, particularly befriend people that may not be in the in-group. Find acts of generosity that you can do. Find your truth, speak your truth. Stay centered and grounded and know that when you are feeling well, when you're not feeling stressed, it's easier to reach out to others. So be well.